Friends, a warm welcome to you this morning as we join in this traditional service of nine lessons and carols. Welcome too to those joining us online today through Facebook. Once we begin, we'll run uninterrupted and unannounced. You can follow the proceedings in your order of service. I'd remind our readers they'll be coming forward during the preceding item, so they'll be ready to lead immediately into each reading. So now, as those wise men did when they came before the Lord Jesus, I call on you one and all to worship him, not only with your lips, but with your lives. Amen. Please be seated. And would you please join with me in prayer? Our Father, as we gather in this Christmas season, we do so with thanksgiving, thankful for your preservation of our lives through another challenging year, thankful for the possibility of family reunions and fun in this Christmas season. And yet, Father, anxious anxious in this year of pandemic that in spite of all our best efforts, the challenges are not yet over. That Omicron will be followed by Pi and Rho and Sigma. And yet it's in the midst of all these things that we are are profoundly thankful for your entry into our world in frail human flesh that you took on our humanity in your deity to face all the risks of our frailty, 
even to death on a cross. And so we pray that our listening and our singing this morning would be full of faith, encouraged in our hearts to keep on trusting our Lord Jesus, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit of the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and I will surely multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of his enemies, and in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice.
The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this.
there shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, and his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide disputes by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt of his waist, and faithfulness the belt of his loins. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the young goat, and the calf and the lion and the fattened calf together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the cobra, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. 
And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Now the birth of Jesus took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, Son of David, 
Do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call him his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us.
In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over the flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger.
Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way. And behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. I want to say well done to you this morning for making it this far in our nine lessons and carols, especially if you're a kid. Uh, here we are at reading number nine, which means we're just about done. Actually, adults as well, because it's easy to drift off, isn't it, in the bits that aren't the magnificent music, uh, maybe lose focus. So I just want to take a moment to recap for you and point out that you haven't just made it through our church service, but in a sense through the whole story of the Bible which reaches its climax 
and its fulfilment in the coming of Jesus. We started, did you notice, in reading number one with a story set in a garden. Not right at the beginning when everything is good, but at a key point just after that, where mankind has decided to eat not an apple as in the song, but from a symbolic tree in the story called the tree of knowing good and evil. The tree of, I'll decide right and wrong for myself, thanks. With terrible consequences. The consequence from that point onwards of being at odds with our Creator. Ashamed, afraid, Genesis chapter 3. And at odds with the created world, which instead of a garden, becomes a place of prickles and thorns, of hardship and struggle, of endless work and relentless friction. In our second reading, Sarah picked up in Genesis chapter 22, Abraham's encounter with an angel, a messenger from God, who reminds him of the astonishing way God has chosen him a few chapters earlier, to restart the project, to be the father of a nation of people who through his family line would bring blessing again. A very long project that runs right through the rest of the Bible. Reading 3, Felicity picks up the prophet Isaiah, words of hope that one day blessing would come. Peace, justice, righteousness. All the things that in our best moments we hope for. That one day a light would shine in the darkness. Then Jonathan read from Isaiah chapter 11, more specific, one from the family line of King David, who'd bring a new era of equity. The poor and humble lifted high like never before. Of great reversal. Words written about the coming of Jesus hundreds of years before Jesus. Which brought us at last, after a long pause, to the New Testament and the angel's announcement to Mary, marrying into the family of the line of King David, finding favour with God, to give birth to the one who the angel says is going to rule forever, son of God. Reading number six from Paul, the awkwardness with Joseph, her embarrassed fiancé, who also encounters an angel. I mean, how is he going to believe her otherwise? That would be a miracle, wouldn't it? Letha then, with reading number seven, planting the events firmly in history, Caesar's decree, the journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem, which oddly is where the prophets had said this Saviour would be born into the house of David. And here they are with more angels singing in the heavens to humble shepherds celebrating the birth of a baby king who would bring peace. And then in Deb's reading, the wise men come. Interesting that regardless of the Christmas card pictures and the words of the song we just heard from the choir, the Bible never says there are three of them. These magi, astronomers following maybe a a comet, maybe a convergence of planets, something pointing them towards the birth of a king. But they do come with three gifts and they fall on their knees and they worship him, which is meant to be a cue, of course, for all of us who have followed ever since. And now the final reading from John's Gospel, the disciple of Jesus who's been with him through thick and thin, finally reflecting in his later years on what it all means. The cosmic picture of what's unfolded. There are those who say you can't take John's words seriously because, of course, he's biased. Jesus was his friend. Of course he's going to be promoting his reputation. Well, in fact, there's no doubt about that because John says at the end of his Gospel, that is exactly what he's doing. Writing down what he saw and heard 
and his conclusions about it so that we can see and hear too and believe. Now, there are plenty of people who know me pretty well, some who even like me, I've got friends. But they would never say anything like this about me. In fact, the better you get to know me, the less likely you'd be to confuse me with God in the flesh. So listen to John and the conclusions he came to about this one who he knew, who history leads to, who angels celebrated, who was born, who lived and walked and talked with men like John. John says, my conclusion is that he is nothing less than divine. God himself in human flesh. The very logic of the universe, the logos, the word that became one of us. So listen to these words about Jesus. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all may believe through him. He was not the light but came to bear witness about the light. The true light which gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world was made through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Let's pray. Lord God, maker of the universe and ruler of all, we thank you at the appointed time all your promises to mankind through the prophets, through angelic messengers, through your scriptures, finally found their fulfilment in the birth of this child. Humble in a farm shed, though Lord of all. We pray that in this Christmas season you would bless us and those we love with good things. But more than that, we ask that you would speak to our hearts by your spirit and prompt us to ask each one of us what it might look like to truly worship that one as the wise men did. Give us that wisdom too, we ask in Jesus' name and for his glory. Amen. And now may grace, mercy and peace from God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen.